Hi, it's the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, June 5th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. Well, here's Cristobal. Now a tropical storm again has emerged off of Mexico, has swung up quickly last night and today, and is now over the southern Gulf of Mexico. And this is the point at which a lot of our questions get answered that we've had for the last two to three days. Uh, we now know how long it's been over land quite some time, and as a result, the circulation is quite broadened, and we have a very large area of low pressures uh, here in the northern Yucatan, according to surface observations, indicating that the circulation is not particularly tight, um, as it has now diffused into this large larger gyre that we have emerging over the Gulf. However, uh, there are some differences from both of the model solutions that we have been talking about the last few days, the European model and the GFS, which have uh, disagreed on what the system would look like today. Which one of these models got it right? The answer is kind of neither, and what we were going to have on the European was something kind of slow and off to the southwest here that kind of came up and was tighter and more defined, whereas the GFS had something a little bit farther to the east and a little bit weaker and more elongated than what we we have today, which is actually a circulation that is fairly well defined, broader than the euro, tighter than the GFS, and located kind of in between. And it's not too unsurprising that the average of these two models is likely closer to reality than either one. But that aside, we now know what we have over here in the southern gulf, and so how is this going to evolve as we go forward? Well, we see we have a lot of convection off on the eastern side. This is not so much due to any kind of real shear, so much as the fact that we have a lot of warm air coming up out of the Caribbean, and we have what could even be termed a very weak warm front in here over the eastern Gulf, and a lot of this warm moist air is getting lifted up, and so we're getting a lot of outbreak of precipitation, and uh, this is kind of removed from the center of circulation, so the maximum winds are probably way out here. We do have a recon plane that I didn't have time to wait for before recording this, but that will provide data as to how broad the radius of maximum wind is with the system later on in the evening. Now if we look at the water vapor satellite loop here, we'll also see that we have all this dry air positioned to the west of the cyclone that we've been talking about, placed there by this upper level trough that's currently kinking over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico, also supporting this convection to the southeast of that trough where convection usually likes to occur. This dry air for the moment is not getting wrapped in. We can see the moisture bubble here does encompass the current center of circulation. So there's not a lot of dry air getting in just yet, but this is going to wrap in at some point within the next 12 to 24 hours, and we will start turning this into more of a comma-shaped uh, moisture envelope, sort of like this, as we get some sort of dry tongue coming in here. And so this is going to be more comma-shaped tomorrow as it moves north. Now, the big question before this gets to the North Gulf Coast in terms of intensity is, when might this wrap the comma up into a more symmetric moist bubble? And if we look at the GFS for that here, this is the mid-level moisture field in green. This is where Crystal Ball is on the model 2 p.m. this afternoon. As we go forward, you will see some of this dry air start to wrap in. So again, this is going to be some big comma cloud shaped thing, lots of rain occurring well in advance of the storm, even north and east into potentially Florida on Saturday and Sunday, well removed from the center, and we could see potential for flash flooding concerns uh, well away from the center here on the east side. But what's going to happen here is this is basically an occlusion process where the storm is fairly intense here, you know, in the night, low 990s in terms of pressure, vigorous rotation will wrap this dry air around, but eventually uh, this will kind of choke off this band of moisture on the east side coming out of the Caribbean and what you'll be left with is an isolated ball of moisture where the storm is with dry air kind of wrapping around all the way to the north. Now on the GFS, this now happens, you can see the dry air now choking it off, and we start to get a symmetric ball by Sunday morning. Now an important distinction in the models today is that this is happening a little bit sooner on the GFS than in prior runs. If we go back to some of the runs from yesterday, you'll see that on Sunday morning, we did not have this yet. We had the dry air still just punching in, and the storm is rather devoid of moisture and convection on yesterday's runs, but on today's runs, we have this more intense ball of moisture quicker on Sunday morning. And this is important because it's before landfall. So from this point forward, 
that this could allow the storm to gain more central convection once again instead of having all the thunderstorms removed on the northeast side. This situation would favor centralized convection that could theoretically allow the storm to start intensifying through more bona fide tropical processes than it is right now and perhaps make a run at hurricane intensity but only if it has enough time over water to do so. And right now on the GFS from this point forward it has six maybe 12 hours before it reaches the coast on this particular run. It's not a lot of time and the cyclone doesn't intensify that much on the GFS during the time that it's given. But if it gets maybe, you know, another 6 or 12 hours because it moves a little slower, theoretically we could see some ramp up of the winds before this gets to the coast. If we look at the upper level wind field at this time, it is uh, rather ideal, in fact, with very light 200 millibar flow on this model uh, near the cyclone and really not a lot of shear here. Again, we talked about for the last few days, it's not really going to be about shear here. It's more about the dry air in terms of limiting this along with its broad size. If you do a vortex mean sounding over the storm, you'll see that indeed the shear profile is quite benign with nearly uniform light 10 knot flow from the top to bottom of the atmosphere. So very light shear here. It's really all about this dry air and the broad nature of the storm. Broad storms take time to contract and generate strong winds. This will be no different. Does it get enough time to do that? Right now, most models say it doesn't really have a lot of time to actually reach hurricane intensity. And the current consensus is that this will not do that and will maintain winds somewhere around about 60 miles per hour. That's the current forecast from the National Hurricane Center. But there could be some wiggle room here if it gets some extra time over water. So don't be too surprised if it makes a run at hurricane force winds, which begin at about 75 miles per hour. But ultimately, it might not make that much of a difference to overall impacts. We're still expecting a broad area of heavy rainfall, potential for inland flash flooding, but also storm surge due to the strong southerly wind pushing ocean water onto the coastline in this surge prone area of the eastern Gulf where storm surge can occur very easily. This is the current official forecast where we have this track a little bit quicker today than yesterday just by a hair. This is now expected to be just off the coast on Sunday afternoon and coming ashore in southeastern Louisiana Sunday afternoon or evening. Most of the tropical storm warnings are on the east side of the landfall point on this forecast because again most of the strongest winds are expected to be on the east side along with most of the heavy rainfall near and east of the landfall location is where we expect most of the significant impacts to be. Uh, if we look at the rainfall forecast from WPC, you can see that here with the forecast track into southeastern Louisiana. You do get a little bit of rain on the west side of that track, but most of it is on the east side, potentially even extending into the Florida Panhandle. So again, potential for flash flooding if you get too much rain all at once. We also have a new experimental graphic from the NHC showing the potential maximum storm surge and we can see uh, the values here 2 to 4 feet in southeast Louisiana, uh, 3 to 5 feet in eastern Louisiana and Mississippi and then various amounts of 1 to 4 feet in Florida and so this is a nice way to see what's generally expected in your section of coastline. Remember to check your surge zone to see if you are prone to flooding from something like this. Remember, even though it's not a hurricane, a long fetch of strong wind at 50, 60 miles an hour coming over a long distance toward the coast does push a lot of water. And so this is likely to be the primary danger with this system, along with potential inland flash flooding. We'll keep an eye on it to see exactly how strong the winds get, but right now expected to remain below hurricane intensity on its way on shore. Again, expected the latter part of Sunday. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.